Okay, so we should be going live. I'm just straightening my camera to the right angle. I have my Neil with me and we're going to keep talking and we'll just wait a few minutes until we see if anybody is going to log in. So tonight we are going to do it Blue Peter style. What does Blue Peter style mean? Well, I will tell you. I have a start, a middle and an end. So we get to see all sort of three stages of the different products. So let me just check if I've got the best angle. Well, I've probably got a good angle, but I'm going to wait until we get a few people in and I'm going to let Neil to tell me who is in there. So who do we have at the minute with us, Neil? We've got uh, Meninda. Hello, Meninda. Welcome. Thank you for dropping by. So the first stage is going to be working on my hearts, which is the um, MDF. And I have pre-taped them all at the back. They're a really nice thick side, so they're very beautiful. So I'm going to show you how I do my preferred style of an ocean, which is to paint the underneath with the acrylic. Once I've done the acrylic, because we don't have the time really to wait and that watch that dry, here's one I prepared earlier in a Blue Peter style. So I'm going to show you how I've painted uh, the edge, tape the back, and you'll see me do my first layer of resin on this piece. And then, because we can't wait 12 hours for that to cure, I've got one that I did yesterday, which has had it taped. It's had its acrylic first layer of resin, and I'm going to come in with my last bit of resin, and I am going to apply my starfish. So, it's Blue Peter style. So, I don't know if it's Blue Peter style or a cook show, but here's one I did earlier. So, I'm going to get my paints ready, and in the meantime, my Neil is going to let me know who we've got on. Join us over here in Southampton. So, we've got good evening to Joyce, to Julie, to Solitary Empath to DCR, to Tina P, hey, Tina. Jellica and Fernanda, good evening to all of you. Yeah, good evening all, we appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. We're trying to perfect our live time and keep Sharon in control because I tend to like to do my work where I do lots of embellishments and it's very hard to do that in a live time and capture it all. So uh, I'm currently working on my colours, getting them out, but sorry, did you want to say something, Neil? No. Oh, no, I thought you were no. going to say something. No. Or are you Thank just... you, Meninda. It's N-E-I-L. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> <laughs> are you just trying to show them that I, I am out of control? Hey. All right. So I don't know if you can see me just off camera. It was very hard to get everything in, but I've just put out my colours to help me. And in typical Sharon style, I prefer these colours when I'm working on an ocean, but you do not have to use acrylics. If you are using acrylics, you have to add caution because resin really does hate water and <laughs> acrylics are made out of water. So it's typical colours I'm using. This time I'm only going for four gradients of the ocean colours, mainly because of the size of the project that we are working on. So that one is the green blue, not the blue green, it's the green blue. <laughs> Very similar but different tones. Coming in with the turquoise and then a little bit of the white. So when I apply the uh, second stage, which is the resin, I'll keep the same color scheme so it's going through. And the reason I prefer to do that is it gives depth, but because you're working on MDF, it's a very thirsty board. It really does want to um, absorb a lot. So by me putting the base on, it helps me map out in my mind where the colors are going. It gives me depth, but it also it feeds the board. And nobody wants to be thirsty, Neil. No, I'm not <laughs> that for sure. So, so, Solitary is asking me to get Limber to uh, stop you in case you go too far again. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All the weekends, I, I spent three hours flat on my back yesterday, putting my back out, but I, I will get as Limber as I possibly can. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, no rhyme or reason. I'll try and keep it fairly similar to how I've mapped out the other ones, only because it will help you when I'm going on to my Blue Peter style second and third stage. I apologize if I am moving the board, I'll try and keep it in focus. The reason I'm doing this is one, because of my back, and I've noticed that I got my head in the shot a lot last time. And nobody wants to see Sharon's roots because Neil's not done them since the last week uh, we were on. <laughs> um, I want to know how heavy, heavy everybody's week's been. 
So I'm gonna wait until I get a response and then Neil's gonna let well, me know what you've been up to. Melinda's or... kindly saying that you're her motivator for resin art. Ooh. Very nice. Well, that's a very nice compliment. We all get inspired by many, many different people and I get inspired by your guys' support. Um, it means a lot because it's very, very vulnerable when you do art, especially when you put on a YouTube channel and I do my YouTube channel to give back, but at the same time you're exposing something that's personal to you or your art and um, by getting the support from people or feedback it helps me keep going so thank you all for motivating me. Um, Fernanda's asking are you going to finish with um, epoxy resin? Oh yes I'll go back so I'm doing it Blue Peter style so what does that mean? Well I have a beginning one so you're going to see how I do my base and then I'll be saying Here's one I prepared earlier, which is already done and dried. So you'll see me put my first base coat on there. And then to take it even better, here's one where I've got my first layer of resin on and I'm going to add my uh, final layer of resin to give you more of that depth. So in theory, you'll get to see the full process, but on three different projects at three different stages. So hopefully that will add value. So um, I'm not too sure. Has anybody actually heard of Blue Peter? I don't know if the, most of the people I've got are all yeah, over the world. English. Good evening to, uh, you'll have to excuse the pronunciation here, the Mamgusian from Wales. Hey! They've probably heard of Blue Peter. <laughs> they would have heard of Blue Peter. <laughs> Hello to Robin. So I like to do my edges, mainly because it is going to seep over the side. Again, it's going to stop that board being thirsty and uh, it just adds to that nice compliment and once this is all dried at the end i will go back and do um oh got the wrong tone there uh, more colors at the back there so again this is not going to be the end image but i do blend through because you do see through it but it's just to help old sharon as she's forgot where things are, are going to be when she starts applying the old resin and i've just remembered i forgot to get my sand colors out but that's all right and we're going to uh, finish it off with a little bit of embellishment which is going to be this cute little starfish so you'll see get that one get added well i think i'll be allowed to do that that's not considered as overworking it is it not that size i think you'll be all right there <laughs> evening donna evening amy and evening roxy yeah good evening everybody thank you for taking the time to come and hang with us if you've got any questions if you want to know what Neil's been up to and if he's been troublesome, you know, ask away. We're here to connect with you and um, get to know you all a little bit better. Evening, Patricia from London. Hello, Patricia. Welcome. I hope Just up the road. Yeah, it's not far at all. So, coming in with my final tones, I've decided I want my beach to be a bit curved. It's going to be a bit curved this way. I don't know why. The Hearts of the Ocean, I really believe that these are a really nice project size for you to work on, really good gifts. And if you do want to sell your art, they're a good uh, price point for you. And it's just a beautiful size. And I do tend to get a lot of interest about these. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this in shot. I'll let Neil let me know if I'm... Uh, I always think doing anything live or a video for YouTube is like... Uh, patting your head and rubbing your tummy because you've got to keep talking about it doing it making sure it's all in shot but it's first world problems really isn't it it's not too bad okay Just so want to say to fernanda uh Bortard, como esta? oh yeah hey i didn't know you could do that uh, well, portuguese brazilian i spent a lot of time in uh brazil in uh portugal well neil I think you might have to say that to me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I only discover things about you on YouTube? <laughs> eh? All right, so, oh, I forgot a cloth. I thought I was so prepared. Oh, a little bit of uh, paper behind you. And I am just going to come in my, with my Y and then the beach. And then this stage is all done and you're gonna get to see me mix up my resin. So my wonderful helper, Neil, is going to mix me up 200 mils of resin tonight i am using the old master cast i'm back with my uh, preferred resin at this stage that i like to work with so i pop that cork, uh, cork on the master cast and so far the resin gods have been good to me and while i've been using it i've had better days in the studio 
So, Neil, that's just your reminder again, mate. Well, I'm mixing up my uh, resin. Yeah, mixing up the resin for me while I keep painting. And I want to know who's uh, who's worked on an ocean scene recently themselves. That's my question to you. That's just a distractor uh, all and gave me some time, by the way. So Tina P is asking, don't you need um, to primer paint the board first before you're adding the paint? This is my primer. <laughs> um it's a preferred choice you can do it um some people this is like i like to create art while i'm priming um so from an mdf board because i do this and then i add two coats of resin there is no issues i don't get excess bubbles for me it works uh, i'm by no means trained professionally i'm sharon i just wing it and i go with my gut feeling and this seems to really work with me so i forgot to mention my uh, beach colours. So I'm just going with a little bit of the yellow okra and then a little bit of the um, ivory. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I'm not going to need much of this at all. And then the painting side is just about over, but you can see I'm getting messier. I'm just a messy worker. Meninda loves those uh, colours. Um, uh, Fernanda's saying uh, the waves give a, uh, a lovely charm to it. I do, thank you. I really do like when you're working with a turquoise and then with the turquoise you bring through a little bit of the white and it gives that milky effect uh, to give you that impression that this, um, the ocean's churning away. And I like to put a little bit of darker colour near where the waves are lapping on. Most of this will disappear but if you do capture just a little bit of it still it helps give that illusion of uh, depth and it makes the difference sometimes between making that ocean look like it's receding backwards or not. But again, this image doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to be going over it all with resin. It's just the way I choose to work uh, and it works for me. I don't think it's too bad. It's too bad. Oh, oh, oh you don't want to hear myself repeating on myself. <laughs> Ah, oh, just can't get the... Start, uh, start me spare uh, iPad. Um, I know that you're drinking your cup of tea, sweet, but I'm ready for my resin. Oh, want that now? I thought yeah, that was at the end. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Did anybody else hear nice me coffee. say to my Neil, um, if you could start mixing up the resin because I'm nearly done with this stage? Um, I think I think you'd all agree with me that you heard it. I was drinking me coffee. I must Sorry. be slurping. I am just going to flip this on its side again so I can get the last of... The sides done. These MDF hearts come from Etsy, and for me in the UK, when I just type in sort of MDF shapes, it comes up with lots of different people um, that do them. And people may have seen my videos where I've done Hearts of the Ocean. The first time I did it, there were very thin ones from a um, cheap but good craft place, and they had holes in the middle, and I tried to do them both sides. And they were looking beautifully, but the resin kept leaking. Uh, so with these ones, I decided if I went for the slightly thicker ones, what that should do is help me control um, the resin runoffs. And um, I am considering doing two-sided ones again. Then that way you can mix it up. You can choose to watch just uh, one side and then flip it over. So hopefully that artwork never gets boring. Let's need a little bit more. Roxy's asking if you sell the... Uh hearts yeah i do roxy they're uh my ocean ones uh I, the problem is i'm really really bad at uh, pushing sales um that's my commitment this year to get better what you're looking for stick um there you go mm -hmm. uh, but the hearts are very popular i've sold some over in the uk i've sold some that's been sent over to australia um or people that live in the uk that are visiting family members in australia um, so I do tend to sell quite a few of those. They're, they're a very popular sort of gift idea. If ever you're doing stalls or um, you want something that's in a price point that most people can comfortably not think about too much when getting gifts for people, these are definitely a good idea. Sorry, I'm getting closer to the screen as I am getting the sides near my eyes. But I've still not heard how everybody else's week's been. 
Oh, Neil's staring, so I think it's a bit hard for him to comment and stare. No, 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 uh, I can do both now. Oh, you can? Yeah. Well done. Can't reach me coffee, though. <sighs> um, so Meninda's going to paint this and uh, send you a pix. That's brilliant. So I can tidy up a little bit now. So what I would normally do at this stage, depending on how thirsty the board is, you might want to do this two coats. These MDFs are very forgiving and I only need to do one coat, but that gives you that nice toning. The edges are done. Uh, so I would leave that until that is dry to touch. And once that's dry to touch, you can apply your first coat of resin. So when I do my first coat of resin, I'll make sure that I pay attention to the sides and the top and get the, the movement. If you get dust in the first layer of resin, it's not too bad because you can come back and apply that top layer. So that's where you want the control. So I'm going to put this one to one side now and, and no, and let that one dry. And then I will do a video, a step-by-step -step video on that one another day. And load that on YouTube for people that want to refer back on to that guidance. So I'm just going to shove my stuff out of the way. So Fernanda's going to be giving it a go as well over in Brazil. Brilliant. So I am going to be moving on to Exhibit B. So this is one that I did yesterday as part of my homework ready for my live. Very similar paints and image. The side's been done. What I am going to do now is start applying my resin and... I usually apply from my sand area, a preferred thing for me to do, I add real sand. Now you can get real sand from hobby shops, mainly places that, believe it or not, sell train sets and they like to replicate model railway trains and things like that. You can get some quite cute miniature things and I can get sand from there. So you'll see me applying that. I'm not gonna add my starfish on this layer, but I am gonna apply my starfish on the second layer. So the one thing you need to make sure you do is have a very level uh, table. Uh, so I've got mine leveled at the back. So once I've done this, I'll move that to the back and bring the other one forward. But for the sake of this and it being closer for me, I'm just going to make sure that this part is level and I would encourage you not to take any cuts in corners with this because it, it takes so long for that resin to cure that even with every, every good intention, if it's not level, it's going to slowly creep off and you're going to ruin your composition. So for this, I am going to glove up. I would always recommend as well when working with resin, Regardless of what the manufacturers tell you uh, that it's safe to wear with, please wear a respirator. Now, when I'm doing live uh, shows, uh, unfortunately, I can't wear a respirator because I can't speak to you. Mastercast has got a low toxicity, but um, make sure you're in a ventilated area. Make sure that you do wear a respirator because over a long period of time, you are breathing in chemicals. So take that into consideration and make sure you do wear gloves. You really don't want any resin touching your skin. People have different kinds of reactions. Uh, when I was learning how to do resin, I got the tip of wearing double gloves, and that is because you can quite easily take off another pair of gloves and you've still got some under there. So apologies for the people that are proficient in resin. I just wanna make sure that I always talk a little bit about safety uh, before we go on. So I'm just trying to check what's in view here if i have any resin leftovers like i did last night i've got my silicone mold where i put in my excess and then i'll keep adding to that uh, until we go so like i mentioned i'm going to apply to my sand area first and i'm just going to spoon that on a little bit because i want to make sure i'm not using too much excess and while i'm doing this i'll ask neil if there's any kind of uh, information anybody wants or what's going on in chat yeah well Robin's saying she's done um, beach scenes with oh, uh, nice. sand and seashells before oh beautiful and Meninda says she loves your uh, video about the coasters you did ah oh, nice it's an amazing project and she enjoyed it oh good evening Kim I want to know if everybody's liking my uh, new intros because I couldn't find out how to get these nice ones that everybody else is using where it has that pop of colour and a nice bit of intro so I thought you know what I'm going to do it Sharon style and I'm going to talk to you about the end product and people can choose to watch it or not but uh, yeah, you haven't missed too much Kim Kim's uh, 
Or she almost missed the live vid. Ah, uh, no. So I am just, you can choose to this with your fingers or not. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have to change my gloves too much. So it's very hard for me to show you this side, but when I come around the other side, I am just applying a tiny little bit of resin, the color that I'm using in the area, and just pasting it on as though you cake, uh, icing a cake, because I need to make sure that the resin is going to seal the sides. Uh, the sides had been painted. Uh, they dried yesterday, sorry. I try not to get in front of the camera while I lean over. Um, it's, I think it's important because it just makes the product feel more quality and it's protected. So I've got it in my sand area. I don't mind if it goes over here slightly because that's going to help control uh, as the white waves crash onto it. I'm just going to pause it there now and very lightly, and this is a preference of myself, I like to add my sand, just making sure it's not going to come over this area here. And I just like to shake it. Now, somebody mentioned the other day, which was a very smart idea, why don't I put it in a salt shaker? And I'm going to do that. But at the minute, I'm just working my way through because we're in the middle of moving, I don't have anything. And I kind of crisscross it just so that it absorbs into the resin and hopefully gives you that illusion of texture, and sort of moves in different directions if i feel i need more and that doesn't absorb into the resin and it needs a little bit more i'll just drizzle a little bit and uh, that helps so just here i'm just going to drizzle a little bit more here but that it almost goes very thick and stodgy but it's kind of nice it sort of keeps it there so now i'm going to apply and I'm, now i'm going to work from my dark over and that's just my preference I'm not going to gradiate the colours too much for these because they're quite small pieces, um, but I should gradiate it enough. So I'm going to start with my... Um, I'm sorry, I'm just concentrating just to make sure I don't... update you while you're in. concentrating. Patricia's saying she's uh, yet to do a beach scene. She's building up her items slowly. Nice. Kim's still shocked that Manchester City beat uh, Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I work in retail and it was so quiet today because of how many people within the whole of UK, regardless of what team you're watching, were watching all the final matches, I think, of the season. So, yeah, so I'm just applying my ultramarine. Now, this is where you have to be very, very cautious. I don't add more than a pea size of this, especially because it's quite, uh, there's hardly any resin in there because you want to make sure it's not going to go marshmallowy, it's not going to cause a chemical reaction uh, and that you're not going to ruin your resin. So it's a nice blue. I'm just trying to work out if I've got too little there. I might need more resin at this rate. Fernanda's wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. This is International Mother's Day. Oh, hang on. I say international, international for us. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, where's my Mother's Day card? Different day over here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Been and gone. Uh, Kim's saying she's used a uh, salt shaker before, and uh, although you might think you have more control, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I I would say if it's anything to do with when I used glitter the other day, I used it in a shaker pot and that just came out in a big glump. So I'm like, yeah, no, that didn't work. So with resin, I would just say, remember it, it it's self-leveling. It'll continue to move. So the temptation might be to add too much. And on these small pieces, you really want it controlled. So I'm just bringing it to the edge. So you almost get that domed effect. And now I'm going to come in with my little stick and you're going to see it here and I'm going to paste it on like a cake again. Now with this, it's definitely worth um, not rushing it. Just make sure it does make sense by meeting the end of the colour that you've just applied. And if you want, you can add a little bit of glitter. Uh, I tend to, it just depends if I've got them, if, I, if it takes my fancy with the glitter. But for these ones, I'm not going to add any glitter. Uh, if you just restrain with that, what you might find is that it adds to that sparkle of the ocean. Sorry, I'm going to have to get my head in front of the camera. Soon, Kim's asking, do you tape the underneath? Oh, well, where's my one I showed earlier? <laughs> it's just up there. Yes, I definitely do. This one you just painted. Yeah, you? underneath. <laughs> it should be nearly dry now. There you go. Turn it up. There you go. There we go. All taped up. 
Oh, you guys in shop. It's definitely worth it. Um, sorry, just Neil, can you tell me if I'm right in front of the camera there? No, no, just your shoulder. Just my shoulder. <laughs> as long as my roots are not there, it's all good. Almost dry, my fingers are covered in paint. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to blow any air bubbles out at the minute because they'll naturally come to the surface while I'm adding the other colours and I don't want to overwork it too much at this stage. So I'm going to keep that cut because I'm going to be able to reuse it for my second layers when I come through onto my third piece, Blue Peter style. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one I prepared earlier. So coming back now with that shade lighter. Just a little bit more. I think I'm going to need some more resin mixed up, Neil. Oh. I know, I should have asked for more. <laughs> Get over it, you'll be right. Uh, Patricia's asking if that is acrylic blue paint. paint. It <laughs> is. Um, so I... For my ocean so on this one with a blue again just a pea size i prefer to use these colors just because these are the best shades that i associate with the oceans that i connect with but you do have to add cautions there's plenty of other colors out there in pigments and powders uh, that you can use but it's just a personal choice and the these particular ones i use respond quite well to resin but if you did add too much it would definitely go marshmallowy so you have to be cautious of that so I'm now coming in with my slightly light one. I'm just going to dab a little bit down there and a little bit down here so that that's going to bleed through and then spread it out and then I'll use the rest for the sides. Again, just getting it to the edge to create that slight dome effect. I'm not trying to force this off the edge because I'm going to come around and paste it so that it meets together. I think I'm making up my own words, Neil, again. <laughs> so... Patricia is saying it's the same blue underneath. Yes, exactly the same. It's just my preference because that um, in certain lights, depending on where you're adding it, it can reflect through and it gives you that sense of depth. So my acrylic paint is twofold. It maps out where I'm going with my colours. It seals my board that I'm using. And I think it adds value. I get asked it a lot, is it necessary? I don't think it's necessarily necessary it's a personal choice you are going to have to prime your board it all depends what feel you want from your painting so all i would say is find a process that works for you and be true to yourself so kim's asking uh, what respirator do you use am i allowed to laugh at this stage and go to the cupboard and dig it out no to find i out? use my <laughs> respirator i used it last night I just can't use it when I'm on live, but you chose it for me, Neil, so you can say what, I what, Neil got it for me, because I know bugger all about chemicals, I'm not going to lie. Well, this particular one is JSP, but uh, there's a whole, whole different bunch, but this one works all right for you, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'll just, I'll show you rather than, uh... so you can just replace the uh, breather panels when you want. You can get different types of um, panels for different, um, or filters I should say, for the different um, sort of chemicals, but we just go for the uh, the finest one you can get basically. Now you can wear dust masks when you're applying your pigments, but all that's gonna do is stop you breathing in fine particles. It's not gonna protect your lungs or your brain. <laughs> uh, so just take that into consideration. I would always recommend finding a low toxicity one, Anyway, ventilated area, but uh, when you're working on anything, especially different brands I've been trying, some different brands, I notice you can get a headache even with a respirator on. Uh, some have got a very sweet smell. It's like if you work with alcohol inks. I have to wear a respirator when I'm working with alcohol inks. They really do make me feel like I'm very stoned, for want of a better <laughs> word, like I get a headache. That because you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do drugs, people. Don't do drugs. But... No. <laughs> but when you breathe in that stuff in, it's, yeah, uh, it's so a big effect. Yeah, so we're coming through to the green. I'm going to tailor that back a little bit, get some colours hopefully gradiating through. And then there's just going to be our turquoise left and the white air bubble it. And then 
phase two is done and I'll move that back to where I've already leveled it ready for when it goes back I can't believe how prepared I've been really seems like the blue Peter style is uh, is the way to go for me it starts me getting too stressed I'm glad that helped Kim it's uh, they're available all over the place I mean JSP is one of them but there's a whole bunch but hopefully um, hopefully you'll be able to find one for you and uh, that one's not too obtrusive, is it? No, it's not. Um, it, certain times... All respirators get hot and... Yeah, pretty... I was just going to say, sometimes... I mean, for me, no, it's not uncomfortable. You can breathe easily uh, and it works. But I have noticed sometimes when I take it off, the centre part can have a little bit of moisture in there. And I think that's depending on yeah. the humidity or how long I've been wearing it or working on it. Uh, last but not least, I'm coming in now with the... Um, Oh, got the wrong one out. Turquoise. No, that's right. Marinda loves the choice of colours. Thank you, Marinda. <coughs> they are a typical Sharon Ocean colours, although I have done stormy scenes before and I've been set a challenge by a lady that watches my channel around doing one that um, looks like it's got an island in the middle. Uh, so I'm going to write that down on my list of things to do and also the wonderful Michael Haliwani who is a friend of mine but also a photographer and does a lot for National Geographic he uh, he inspired me to do those uh, three the pod of whales if you've not seen that check that video out it's a 3d ocean scene and he's taken some photos that I'm gonna try to see if I can replicate again with resin uh, so there's uh, a few different styles I'm gonna try and do with some ocean scenes but these are what I look at and they, they make me happy. They remind me of all the times I've walked down the Indian Ocean in Australia or if we've been on holiday to Greece or anything like that. So you'll notice there's a little gap currently between where the ocean is meeting the sand and that is purposeful because I'm going to fill some of this with white but it is also self-leveling. If I find that the gap's too much what I can do is add a little bit more colour to it. I'm just going to see how I go while it's levelling at putting my sides on and seeing what I've got left. Now, because it's taped underneath, I'm not too worried about those drips, but I will every so often just do that. These, by the way, are really great uh, things for your table if you're working on resin. Uh, they're just uh, children's party cloths and you can put resin on there and it peels off. Uh, they're pretty non-expensive. And you can make quite a few tablecloths out of them, FYI. I'm just going to tease that this way now. I'm going to make sure I've got as much on here as I want before I add the white. And I'm going to air bubble it. And then I'm going to come in and create my waves. And then move this to one side and then we'll start the process of the second layer on the other piece that I've got waiting Waiting in the wings, Morley. Waiting on the wings. Okay, ready. It's the final stages. Any any questions or anything, Neil? No, no, no. Yeah, we're doing good. Have I lost people? Are they bored? Oh, um, Patricia's asking where you get the children's party cloth. Um, uh, well, these ones came from. Uh, um, came from a business I used to run many years ago. <laughs> and it, it, it um, got all these left in a box. I'm like, oh, I can make use of those. But you can actually buy them at, at mo most like... Um, Even supermarkets will have those. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to give my hands a wipe down with alcohol wipes. Now, um, alcohol wipes, I have a love-hate relationship with them. They're pretty good at uh, removing stuff. And practical but i hate the smell of them they give me a headache and they make my skin very chapped amy says yeah very bored okay my new gun that neil got me so don't hold this directly onto your resin it should never touch the flame directly you're holding it above and you're just watching those bubbles come out you try not to burn your resin but you do want to get as many of these bubbles out as possible because I don't want to ruin it when I start to add my waves because once I've had the waves I don't like to manipulate much at all what was that? I was laughing at uh, 
towel's message that got deleted then. Hey. Hello, Sharon and son. <laughs> <laughs> she quickly deleted it. I saw oh. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Patricia's asking what it's made of. Oh, the... Um, the what? The sheets, I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> they are just... Uh, oh, oh, they're what like do you a call it? Silicone? Polyurethane oh, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. they're just a plastic one. Um, to be quite honest, the cheaper, the better, because the cheaper ones are made of more solid um, plastic. Well, we don't so, really want plastic in nowadays. Well, no, but... It doesn't it's like recycle uh, stuff. Yeah, it does. Uh, oh yeah, they do use recycled plastic yeah. to make them. Um, All right. Kim's asking, how do you get cells? She's used resin a few um, drops of isopropyl, a yeah. few drops of white acrylic, and still no cells. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I am not a cell chaser. Um, I'm not really, um, like for me, I, I don't put them in my art purposely. Now I have made some accidentally and I believe if you go to the wonderful Artist Till Deaf channel, they are amazing at creating uh, cells and I'm sure there's people who are watching today that can share you. A lot of it goes from using different consistencies or different types of, like if you're using, um, like if I was to use this casting craft as a white base and put that on, and then add my different color pigments, I will get cells from that. So if you've got some that's got like a little bit of an oil uh, sort of base, you'll get natural cells. If you're using different pigments with different, that are different in weight, you'll get some cells. I know that stone coat countertop, if you were to use their white or their black bases, because they're like a, a oily kind of substance, that will give you uh, cells as well. And it's about not overheating it. Uh, and just being willing to uh, like merge them together so I'm not the best person to give you advice on sales but I'll throw it out to other people uh, that work with resin uh, and get them to talk about their experiences but yeah it's just something a personal choice of myself that I don't necessarily chase creating cells so I've not made it a big focus for myself. Solitary is saying she's enthralled with your process and uh, eaten half a tup pint of ice cream watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. And Kim wants the other half of the uh, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, try to make it riveting TV down here in Southampton. So when I'm applying my casting craft, it has a tendency to want to go underneath the resin because it's a heart, uh, like a more solid. I don't know if that's the cry. I'm not... I'm not a, a pharmacy. I don't know the difference of, like, from a technical point of view, but this is a heavier pigment that'll sink to the bottom. Denser. Denser, that's the word I was looking for. So when I apply this towards the front, I'm gonna put a thicker coat in here, but I'm trying to leave a little bit of blue between because once I blow it, if you get some darker tones mixed in with the whiter tones, what you are gonna get is a more realistic wave effect. And where I'm applying um this white now it's a personal choice you might not want many you might want just one big one and you might do a blob like i've just done there don't stress it's all going to blend in so i'm thinking that i'll add uh two little bits of white here and it's a natural break where the colors gradiate with each other so that's what i'm using as my reference um you can use whatever reference you want want just think about it doesn't have to be realistic. We're not going for realism with this particular image. We're just going for a feeling of the oceans and wanting people to connect with the waves. You do get a beautiful contrast when you put white against this, uh, the deeper colors that the black here. So there's, those are the ones that normally make me go, wow, did I create that? Uh, it's, it gives back a lot. So I am just gonna come back now and use so Kim's asking, what about using oil paints? Um, I've not put oil paints in there. Uh, I've not tried it within resin. Uh, when I use oil, not oils, I've not used oils, but when I use acrylics, I'm cautious with that. So I would imagine, um, you know what? It's worth giving it a go, but just, just have a fire extinguisher near you, <laughs> which sounds <laughs> dramatic. 
but if you're going to be exploring with adding different things to resin if you've got the wrong ratio it can cause a thermal event and that thermal event can mean that it's going to cause the resin to cure at such a rapid pace that it will heat up expand and fume and it could set on fire worst case scenario so i would say we had it at the start didn't you? yeah got really hot and bubbly that time yeah that was adding acrylics now i add acrylics to my resin but different brands will have different um ingredients so i would say do a test add it work on a small piece because resin's expensive you don't want to waste resin and see where it is now you've seen that i've just done a little bit of looping here that's a preference of myself that i like to see where the ocean spin are at least implied on the beach uh, and I tend to do that. So I'm going to come through with a gun heat torch. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting what I'm doing. Uh, one more time. And then I'm going to get the fun part out, which finalizes it all, which is my um, blowtorch. Now I get asked frequently, is there a difference between heat gun, blowtorch, dryer? Yes, you'll get different effects from them all. The what I just used, which is the blowtorch, it removes bubbles. It doesn't heat a big area up, so you've got more control in it. The heat gun that I'm going to do now, um, I've got a nice posh one when we move house, but currently I'm using this one. What this will do is it'll heat your resin up rapidly and make it more fluid. So if you do it in controlled bursts in certain areas, you'll get things to blend and you can't capture that. If you use a hairdryer, yes, it will heat it up, but that's more to create effects. So people that are wanting to try cells maybe use a hairdryer just make sure you don't hold anything too close so there's a bit of noise here if you've got sensitive ears just be careful i'm just switching it on low heat the reason you go over low heat is just to try and warm it up a little bit and then i'm going to work my way from the back forward and just move it backwards and forwards to try and get a wave effect So do not stress if your waves are not exactly how you want them because this is the first coat and what you want is just that feel. I've got a little blob of glitter there from when I was glittering the other day. It's How on earth did I get a blue blob of glitter there? So all I'm looking at the moment is the control of what I've just done. I want to make sure that this is not coming on too much on my sand but it does look like it's crashing on there. These little parts of... Um, spread a little bit but it's added to a more natural feel i want to make sure that this is not going to continue to move off the back so if you're using your heat gun small um sharp burst and control it and uh, the longer it's on there the more fluid it's going to be the more it's going to run off and the more you might lose that composition so i'm really happy with this piece as it stands i'm happy to let this cure now uh, and then we'll come on and put a second coat. Now, you might not want to do a second coat. It's a personal choice. You've got to think about the cost of the resin. But what I like is a little bit of movement. So by adding a second coat, you'll still see this, but it might look like it's more underneath and it'll just add to that 3D effect. So again, it's a personal choice. So I'm now just going to come back and just remove the excess at the bottom. Now, the reason I remove the excess of the bottom is to stop... Uh, the resin that's leaking down being too heavy and stop everything dragging uh, from the top down i apologize if i'm in the way and you're also looking to make sure there's nowhere where resin is not touching and that you are happy with that so i usually just run it around like that get rid of the excess the good thing is because i've taped underneath my resin nipples as they're technically called once i once it's dried i turn it upside down when I'm not doing any more work, run my heat gun backwards and forwards for no more than 10 seconds and you pull bits of tape off at a time and it'll remove those nipples. So I am going to move this to the back. I'm not too stressed if any uh, dust particles are going to go on this because it'll have a second coat, but I am wanting to make sure it's level. So I did make sure that just there, that was level. I'm going to wipe my hands down and then we're going to come and do a second coat on the one I prepared earlier, which was Blue Peter style. It was. You're able to turn that one round so it's facing the camera the way, the way beach 
wise or not? Uh, not really, because what I might do is I just need to, because I'm controlling where the resin's going, I don't want to move it too much, but I'm going to move the other one forward, and then if I move the other one out, then we'll be all right. Cool. So let me see, so I'm moving that one. Good evening, we have Maria Ellen. No, that has to stay like that. Solitary thought you were going to use a straw and a lot of effort to make the waves. <laughs> <laughs> I could use the straw. I have used a straw before, but... I'd be unconscious by now blowing that straw. <laughs> straw. I did use a straw the first time on my very first one, just trying to understand So what, what would happen. But I feel that I don't need enough. And the casting craft helped that. I, I would recommend anybody that can get their hands on it to get some. It creates the best delicate laced in waves i've come across if anybody else has got any recommendations give them my way if people in different countries are really struggling and you really want some what i can do is look at um if you want to pay for me to get the goods for you and the postage i can organize and send some over it that's if you're really passionate about trying it if you can't get older it in your country but this is the one i did yesterday so it's pretty similar to the one before i'll bring it close You'll see that there are some nice waves in there. The colours are coming through. You might be able to see the sand that's come around there. The sides have all done and got a little bit of resin. Not worried about the nipples because they'll all come off when I take the base over. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is stick true to this. Um, I might not add any more sand in this area. I will add clear. And I'm going to try and concentrate in this area backwards because I don't want the white to come too much onto the stand. But what we will do is look at where we're going to put our cute little starfish. So I'm going to ask you, do you want to see it there? Or do you want to see it there? Or do you want it in the middle? I'll let you guys decide what you want the starfish to be. And in the meantime, I'm just going to make sure that I am getting on with this before my resin cures. And in the meantime, evening, Leo. Um saying very nice work what kind of resin are you using so it's mastercast one to one tonight i'm super happy that i've got my mastercast back out loving life towel saying middle patricia's bottom <laughs> <laughs> patricia um, yeah oh donna's uh donna's saying you've given her the confidence to try another ocean scene her Yay. last was pants Oh, bottom, bottom. There's a lot of bottoms coming up. So um, all right, I'm going to stick the starfish in my bottom. You've got three bottoms to two middles and one top. All right. So some people ask me, have I sanded this down between layers? And the answer is no. You don't have to sand them down between layers if you're working on them in such a short time. So this resin was only applied last night, and because it's mastercast, in theory. As long as I've worked with it within seven days, I could just apply it straight to it because it's still curing and there's still something for it to grip to. And uh, But it's a personal choice. If you want to do that, you do that. But follow your manufacturer's guides and instructions. But I just want to save time. If I don't need to do it and it's not going to add any value, why do it? So I am just going around here now and just putting another thin towel in around, pasting it on like a cake. Just to make sure it's even and consistent and it'll help when it's done. I said I wasn't going to apply any more sand, but I might do. What I'm going to do is dip my starfish in. And the reason I dip it in is I just want to make sure that it's covered in resin and there's no air bubbles when I put it down. So I'm just pouring it in and letting it uh, sink off. And then I'm going to place it. I'm going to place it in the bottom like everybody wants. So there be the starfish. Now, some people say, why do I put my starfish upside down? I like the pattern more upside down. And to be honest, if I'm ever seeing a starfish mm -hmm. on the beach, it's normally dead. And I do apologise saying that. And when I look at them, normally they're the upside down and they're so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise for all the people that are crying into their cups of tea now and thinking about those poor things that washed up on the on the beach as we walk so i actually am going to apply sand um i don't know why there's just my intuition that just says apply a bit more sand because i want to cover a little bit of starfish up not a lot just to make it look like it's in there and then if i do lose any of this um foam or beach um it's got something to contend with so it might it might keep it but that's done Anyway, so I'm digressing. Saying, um, 
She doesn't sand while she's still working it. Brilliant. And Patricia is saying, so helpful, why don't you have a PayPal link? Um, I do have a link, but I don't know how to create a PayPal link. Well, you, yeah. you have a PayPal site, but you don't know. Or oh. a PayPal account, well, that's up but to you, you don't have a link. Molly, why don't, don't I have a link? When are you going to get me one, Neil? I can, I'm sure we can create <laughs> you a link. It's just your um, email address. It is currently, it? yeah. So currently I've got my email address which is set up for PayPal. So if anybody did want anything, just make sure you do send me an I'll email or comment. Yeah. Um, but I do want to help people out if they can't get hold of this casting craft because I'm a really big believer in it. I'm making a mess now. It's starting to seem to get messy. All right, so processes again, just that pea size, no more. This time you could be a bit more transparent if you wanted. Uh, because you do want some of that white to show through uh, but believe me it will still uh, shine through so I've just put your um, PayPal account name on there yeah sunnycunning at outlook.com um, but we will look at um, setting you up a link now some people at this stage might be thinking you're <laughs> ruining it Sharon what are you doing solitary is just saying that very thing okay uh, Neil I may need to get ready <laughs> No, the reason, believe me, the reason you do this is you want depth. And this paint that I use is transparent and that's why I like it. So when I put this on here, you're going to see the underneath coming through, which creates that churning motion. But then we apply another wave on top of it, which gives you... Uh, so you've just got to be brave to go over it to get that extra special ocean feeling. And if you watched any of my... Uh, work you'll see it. remember this is the one that i did yesterday so from this angle you might not be able to see it but there's a tiny little wave showing underneath i have faith people you have faith <laughs> <laughs> uh, julie's asking do you sell your completed art i do i'm uh, i i'm actually really bad at that side of it uh what i'm saying is i originally used to have a big website i live in australia did oil paintings mainly, uh, some acrylic paintings, traditional style. And then I left the country, um, separated from my... That up then. <laughs> uh, getting re-established. And when I move into our new house, which is soon, I promise I'm going to get my website back up and running. But I do sell, but it's more um, people contact me and it's private sales rather than being on websites or Facebook. I just can't seem to get that side done, but I do sell. I've sold all over the world. Uh, I've had custom orders and um, people do buy, but I do need to get better at that side. And Meninda's asking, do you sell stuff outside the country? Yes, yes, yeah. we certainly do. We've uh, arranged postage to uh, Spain. quite a few countries now. I've done Spain, Australia, US, uh, US uh, as well as obviously Australia and England. So I am done with the dark blue, I think. Tina's asking what you think of stone coat. I've never used stone coat. Um, I I just, I struggle to think of paying customs to get it in. And I know that there's uh, groups out there that's doing it. So um, I've just been in contact with this lovely lady who's an international artist and she's based over in Finland. And Norway. Norway, sorry. <laughs> done it again um and she's recommended some other resin that's good resin that's based over here in the uk uh so i'm going to give that a go because i'd rather buy something locally if i can and support people over this way um uh, but with stone coal i've not got my hands on it i mean people seem to be raving about it some people seem to be producing really great work so i really can't comment yeah i'm jealous don't get me wrong i'd love to give it a go Good evening, Damaris from Puerto Rico. And Tell's saying um, she's used stone coat and she's found it very thin. Okay. Not all it's cracked up to be then, or should I say that probably everybody has a personal choice, don't they? Depending on what subject they're working on. Okay, this is starting to go really thick, people. I should have made probably a fresh batch of resin up. Mm. 
it's so the one thing I do like about Mastercast, you do have a lot of working time with it, although I'm pushing it now. But it's alright, we're gonna do it. By hook or by crook, I will get us across the line this week, people. <sighs> My Blue Peter style. Without the need for a fire extinguisher. Yeah. <laughs> was that last week? No, it was two two lives ago. Yeah. It was two or three of yeah. yeah. Uh, Tal's saying it's super clear. May be great to use as a final coat. Ah. Yeah. yeah, I know that there's. I know that artists still deaf use it a lot. Um, there's quite a few people that use it, and I, I don't know if that helps them create cells, um, or if it's just uh, the pigments that they're using or the technique. But it definitely does, does seem to be in that little silicone mode and I would recommend that you do that I might get, have to heat this up soon I'll use fresh cups because the ones I'm using so Damaris um, Sharon does paint the wood before uh, when this uh, live stream is finished if you replay it um, she actually showed this being created right from the plain wood so you'll be able to see the entire process of it being painted so then the resin being applied and first uh, layer and then yeah second layer thank you neil that's all right i'm stood up now because i feel that if i'm stood up i'll work quicker which i won't it's just <laughs> an illusion to myself because i can feel the resin it's still okay but it's just going tacky and i just want to make sure i get this on and then i can heat it up so i'm going to work a bit quicker now and just hope that I get across the line which I think I will is anybody panicking yet that I've covered my waves up still or are, no, are they all trusting me at the moment I'll trust in me good Trisha's saying it's beautiful once it's fully dried I'll obviously show you the video because um you'll get you'll sort of see what i mean about the depth of those layers coming through but if you watch if you see my other oceans that you see the the layers through it and you'll understand what i mean okay oh donna's got faith <laughs> <laughs> she says you always nail it I trust you <laughs> I'm not too sure about the old ways, but <laughs> <laughs> we've seen when we're woeful and I've had that. I'm no good at art. I fail. <laughs> well, that's just me. <laughs> hey, you said it. I know. All right, we should have enough left. Coming in with the last bit, and then there'll be enough for the white. Okay. In with my turquoise. Are you alright there, Neil? Are you walking yeah. away? No, I uh, thought I heard something out in the kitchen, so I had to go and have a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got yourself a JD and Coke there. I did. There was a bottle of JD making a noise. <laughs> okay. Tina P's got faith as well. She's in the words of the, seen a lot of your ocean paintings. In the words of George Michael, you gotta have faith. <laughs> Solitary's biting the nails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the ready. <sighs> uh, Jan is saying uh, she likes to use using is very good quality because normally it's not mixed and spread like the pigment. Yeah, it is. It's Peebo and. Uh, and Dalla and Rowney, uh, they are um, they are stunning because I have when I have used other um, acrylics, you get to see little bits of it in um, the resin very very clearly, which is not good. Tal's right. got to go, but yes, Tal, we're um, Sharon's trying to do a live stream every Sunday at the moment. So uh, other than when we're out and about, but uh, yeah, it's becoming a reasonably regular Sunday. Thing. so hopefully see you again next Sunday all right so I am just coming in very finally with my white 
because it's all white. Did you like that joke there? Ooh. <laughs> See you, Tal. See ya, thank you for joining. All right, so I am nearly there with the white. That's just about all my resin, so I didn't need any more mixed up, which was good. Casting craft is just amazing. Then we'll heat it up. Bubble it, heat it up, and then job's a good one. This one needs to cure. I'll just make sure that's mixed in. And we're going to rebuild it again for the people that were nervous. I don't know if you can see, you can see the white through it. You can see the white between the light blue and the... Uh middle blue very easily i can the see it in ones... the dark blue but unfortunately yeah. you're not getting that pleasure so i've got to get my bubbles out thanks solid uh yeah thanks solitary yes if everyone can uh, hit the like button that would be great yeah that would be and patricia's super helpful. asking what casting craft is all right that's up to you neil because i've got to I get this done i don't know I'm you're the hostess artist. with the mouth right. hostess well, Okay, it is an opaque pigment concentrate. <laughs> there you go. Show. I'm none the wiser. She probably wants right. to just <laughs> see it. <laughs> you may have guessed I'm not the artist. Oh, I so might this is what it looks it. like. Yeah, I might oh. need you. Oh. oh, yeah, you need right. to fill this up. It's a disaster. All right, you okay. do that it, one. It's something I can do. I can fill up the... Uh, if I know where it is. On the shelf. All right, here we go. Let's build these waves back up pretty quickly. Now you can move your waves. You don't have to have them straight like I tend to put them, but I'm just doing it for a control. I just want one steady wave across here. There you go. That should do. And then I'm going for the front area here. Be a little one there. And then I need to heat gun it, and we've just got across the line in time, although I can see a tiny little bit of resin that's not there, so I'm going to fill that in. So this is the time to look for any gaps. I am going to have to pull it down the sides and make sure that we're doing good there. So Amy's asking. Um... How much resin you use for the complete piece? That was 200 mils tonight, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, 200 mils got me two layers. So that's not bad. And there's only a tiny little bit that's being put into my spare silicone pot. Meninda's loving it. Karen, um, Sharon gets the hearts off of Etsy. Yeah. There's several places that do them there. So, um, yeah, but she orders them all from Etsy at the moment. Oh, right. Jane's saying you can get Casting Craft on Amazon. Good evening, Helly's Abstract Art. Oh, hello, Helly. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm. You're right there. He topped it up and it was like a no, flamethrower no, no. again. Come on, let's turn you down a bit. All right, just important to get these bubbles out. And then we're going to come in for that final sweep once I fill in this bump here. Fernanda's loving it. Oh, Meninda sharing your videos with her friends as well. Thanks, Meninda. That's very helpful. Thank you. So, Patricia's so saying thanks. All right, so here we go. Let's see if I can make people happy again with my waves. So on low heat, just run it backwards and forwards. You're just wanting to warm that resin up, but not make it too fluidy before we come in. And I've just got to make sure I don't ruin that piece that's behind. <laughs> All right, we're going on to heat high now. Is that heat high or blow high? Uh, blow high, I've only got one heat on this, but it is a hot one. So when I get my other one,
All right, so you see as it floods out, it goes and then it pops back. So that's something you have to take into consideration. I'm getting some nice lacing that's coming. It is going off here. So I'm now just checking my edges. I just want to make sure I've got that dome effect all the way around. And make sure my blue's not going. So I'm just giving it a bit of TLC now. <laughs> what? Patricia's calling it a visual orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> It is, isn't it? It's crashing. But I don't know if you can see, so I'm going to bring you in close now because I really want the people that was a bit nervous with the first layer to see the different depths that you're now getting this way. So avert your eyes while I pull you down. It's going to get a little bit um, shaky for you. I'll try my best to keep it steady. So this is the wave just peeping through. And then under there so that makes it look like the ocean is rolling underneath and every layer you put on it does capture it and that's that starfish and that little bit of webbing that i've got there and there's the orgasm for you it was a big one and a good one <laughs> and as we're going around here and i'm going to take you down just so you can see the sides how it's all seeped off the sides quite nicely so you've got that continuity i need to just blow there uh, and then the starfish so that's what that one's looking like and i will take you over to where i did my first one you can see your nipples forming over there as well <laughs> sorry it's a lot calmer and a lot flatter now you might like that and you might want to do one layer and you want to spot this happening and you've got that movement underneath it so that's where i that's what i particularly like and then this is what i painted to start with so you saw it in three layers where you get the undercoat the first layer and the final layer so i believe that is today's session done so i'm going to flip you around and see myself and see neil and if you've got any questions or anything here we go oh again you don't have to see me. <laughs> <laughs> not a very evening. flattering <laughs> evening all <laughs> not a very flattering a sort of angle of both for us all look no. but for you guys here's my cup of tea that i've not drunk i made that before she even started <laughs> Powerful might be course. a little bit cold now <laughs> thank you all so much for your support thank you for tuning in i hope that you found this video helpful remember thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome if anybody does struggle to get any of these paints and you're wanting some, make contact with myself and we'll see if we can uh, get some organised for you. You'll just have to pay for the products and the shipping, but I can make sure that we get them and send them for you. Uh, uh, but Peebo, they are an amazing brand. So thank you very much. Yeah, solitary is lasting for some <laughs> Peebo now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go now and I just wanted to say thank you make sure you keep tuning in sorry that's my supplies but we'll take you back down here and make sure to share that with you now i am going so peace out love and thank you 